Yes, it's a busy week on Capitol Hill, but political infighting could derail several critical votes. Senate Republicans blocked a funding bill Monday evening, which is needed to prevent a government shutdown and stop the United States from defaulting on its debt payments. House and Senate Democrats are also hoping to pass two major infrastructure bills in the coming days. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian is following it all on Capitol Hill. Tonight, a high-stakes showdown. Voting no says let's risk it. Over a potential shutdown. We will not provide Republican votes for raising the debt limit. Congress at odds over how to avoid an historic default on the nation's debt and keep the government open before funding expires Friday. Without a resolution, agency services could be halted and roughly 800,000 federal workers would be furloughed with suspended pay. At the White House, President Biden exuded confidence as the main pillars of his legislative agenda hang in the balance. I'm a born optimist. I think things are going to go well. I think we're going to get it done. House Democrats huddled behind closed doors tonight ahead of a possible vote this week on the president's $3.5 trillion social spending package. It includes an estimated $450 billion for universal pre-K and to lower the cost of child care, $327 billion for affordable housing, and $225 billion for paid family and medical leave. If somebody wants less than three and a half trillion, tell us what you want to cut. Do you want to cut the child care? Do you want to cut paid leave? Some progressives have threatened to vote against another Biden priority, the one trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill without a deal on the larger plan. Moderates like New Jersey Congressman Josh Gottheimer say there can't be any more delays. But do you think progressives have gotten the upper hand in this process? When we vote Thursday, I, you know, I don't really look at this, frankly, as anybody getting any upper hand. I think this is about the country. Nicole Killian joins me now from Capitol Hill with more. Nicole, it is going to be a humdinger of a week. You're going to be awfully busy up there. Let's walk through a few of the things a few of the many things that they face up there this week. Let's start with the most immediate one. Senate Republicans tonight blocking the government funding bill uh, that was supposed to try to keep the lights on beyond the spending deadline Thursday night into Friday morning. So it failed as expected. What happens next? So what happens next is now lawmakers only have a few more days to try to figure out a remedy. At this point, uh, what seems the most likely option is that uh, lawmakers will put forth uh, what is called a clean continuing resolution. Uh, what they rejected tonight uh, was that continuing resolution, which would uh, fund the government uh, for a few more months. But it also included language in there to suspend the debt limit. That's primarily what Republicans were opposed to. They say they're not opposed to keeping the government open. In fact, lawmakers on both sides say they don't want to shut down the government. So perhaps by removing that debt limit language, that could then pave the way for a vote that would have bipartisan support. Right. So by calling it clean, it's just keep the lights on across the government at current spending levels. Nothing about debt ceiling. The debt ceiling, though, of course, is a big issue, as you said, Republicans opposed to raising or spending or suspending it, which was part of what this uh, this rejected bill would have done. Remind us what's at stake if that debt ceiling isn't raised or suspended in the next few days. Well, according to economists, according to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, everything is at stake. And if the debt limit is not suspended, that could have a catastrophic impact on the U.S. economy. In their view, uh, some analysts have said some six million jobs could be lost. Unemployment rate could go up to nine percent, uh, among other things. And so uh, at this point, uh, the best estimate we have for when uh, the government could reach that debt limit when it doesn't have really any more money left to pay its bills could hit sometime around mid-October to early November. So obviously it's in the interest of lawmakers to try to approve a suspension if they can before we get to that do or die point because the closer we get certainly we'll probably see more impacts with respect to the market uh, and, and you'll recall the last time back in uh, 2011 uh, when lawmakers were on the brink of default uh, we saw the U.S.'s credit uh, rating get downgraded so you know clearly uh, especially Democrats uh, don't really want to see that happen that's why they believe Republicans should uh, back us 
suspension of the debt limit as they have in the past. Republicans, though, argue that uh, Democrats just want to, you know, put more money on the nation's credit card with this uh, reconciliation bill, with an infrastructure bill, and so they don't want to be a part of that. Right. So that's short-term spending bill and raising the debt limit. Those are sort of the housekeeping budget items that Congress does every year or should be able to figure out how to do every year. The other two big things, of course, tying up Congress's time this week are the aspirational things that Democrats are hoping to get done. Let's start first with that bipartisan infrastructure bill. The House was supposed to vote on it today, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi pushed the vote back to Thursday. That bill's already passed the Senate, of course, with bipartisan support. So what's standing in the way of bringing it now to a vote in the House? Well, it doesn't have the votes, you know, and progressives made that clear late last week. Uh, Pramila Jayapal, who's the chair of the Progressive, Progressive, Progressive Caucus, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, she has said that more than half of her members uh, would potentially vote against this infrastructure bill if it had come up for a vote today. So that's why instead you saw it brought up to the floor for consideration uh, for debate, and then the hope is perhaps they can build support or uh, appease progressives to the point uh, by Thursday where they can support it. But even late today, uh, Congresswoman Jayapal reiterated that, you know, she just doesn't want some kind of framework agreement or some kind of agreement in principle. She would like to see this measure, uh, you know, get past the Senate, if at all possible, or to really have a very strong, clear understanding of what the Senate plans to do with the bill. Short of that, uh, she feels, again, that her members may not be able to support this and has even suggested even pushing off uh, this Thursday vote, if possible. Uh, but again, you know, moderates like Josh Gottheimer, who I talked to earlier today, say that's really not an option. This bill, you know, was carefully crafted between Democrats and Republicans. You know, it's time to get those shovels in the ground and, and move forward on this infrastructure package. And Nicole, based on everything you're hearing and everything they're telling you, they're not fighting over what's actually in this legislation, right? They're just fighting over process and scheduling and which one goes first and, you know, do we vote on the one that has all the bipartisan support or do we vote on the one that has Democratic support? You don't hear Democrats fighting that much about what's actually in this, right? Well, not necessarily, but there is certainly some issue with the scope of this package. And so, as you well know, you know, in the Senate, you have senators like Senator Manchin, Sen Senator Sinema, who have expressed concern about the price tag. They feel that $3.5 trillion price tag may be too high. Uh, on the flip side, again, you have progressives like, you know, Senator Sanders or Pramila Jayapal who think, look, you know, we've already come down to that 3.5 number. What else do you want to cut? So, while, yes, broadly, speaking, they support the shared values in this package. You know, the question is, how much, right? Uh, so that being the case, uh, you know, the other part of it, I would say, is kind of a trust issue. Uh, and that really has been Progressive's argument. You know, they don't want to move forward with this reconciliation package only to see things pulled out of it on the Senate side again, perhaps to get that price tag down. So they want some guarantees that, you know, across the board, all of these key priorities, whether it's child care, whether it's climate, uh, whether it's education, you know, they want to make sure everything stays in. But uh, again, that's all, you know, fluid and in flux. And real quick, uh, Nicole, do you get a sense that his fellow Democrats understand that if Congress can't get this done this week, the president's agenda, uh, his entire presidency potentially could be at real risk? Well, I think certainly that's why you're seeing Democratic leaders really try to be forceful uh, to their members about, you know, trying to stay on the same page and to unite around this, because at the end of the day, they do, uh, for the most part, agree on all of the shared values and proposals that come with both of these pieces of legislation. In fact, just uh, this evening, Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer held a call with President Biden, uh, two sources familiar tell us, uh, with respect to that call. And of course, uh, as you very well know, uh, Ed, you know, the White House uh, and the president continue to engage lawmakers on this front because they want to ensure uh, that this gets over the finish line. So, you know, what they often say is obviously this sausage making process could be messy. And that's basically what we're witnessing right now. But across the board, whether it's leadership or lawmakers, uh, they insist that at the end of the day, they do expect to be on the same page with this. But we will see. It's going to be a busy week ahead. We appreciate you. You're kicking it off with us, Nicole Killian. Thank you. You bet.